welcome to Davar Word. It is my pleasure to share with you what I have discovered in my walk so that we can learn and grow together. We all want to be happy. We like to experience positive feelings. Besides making us feel good, positive emotions can benefit our brains and physical bodies. Positive feelings can lower stress hormones, help ease anxiety and depression, and improve our immune system, so we become healthier in the process. A lifestyle of feeling positive emotions every day has a big effect on our happiness and well-being. The greatest obstacle to our happiness is usually the tendency of the mind to fixate on the limitations of our circumstances. We also tend to take for granted the myriad good things we experience every day. Out of habit, each time we have a positive experience, we raise our expectations, sometimes exponentially, constantly needing more and more stimulus to achieve the same level of satisfaction. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, Serve Adonai with gladness. Come before His presence with joyful singing. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 45 to 47 says that curses will come upon us and pursue us and overtake us until we are destroyed because we did not listen to the voice of Adonai our God to keep His mitzvot and statutes that He commanded us. Also, on the account that we did not serve Adonai our God with joy and goodness of heart. God demands that we serve Him with happiness and joy. How can God command a person to feel happy? And if not, then what? Will we sin because we are feeling heartbroken or sad that day? We all have days when we feel miserable and wretched and are tempted to isolate ourselves at home. We cannot just turn on happiness. It is a skill to be joyful and, as all skills are, it must be learned, developed and cultivated in our lives. Did you know that there are many different words in the Torah to describe joy? Rabbi Getzel Davis compiled a list of nine Hebrew words for joy. First, there is simka, the generic word for joy. It describes a joy that is continual and not related to passing experiences. The opposite of simka is melancholy. The letters of Yismak, may he rejoice, are the same as those of Mashiach. So, when we think of Yismak, we think of Mashiach. And then there is Sason, joy that comes from action, effort or pain. It is often associated with circumcision and Mashiach ben Yosef. We see the story of Joseph in Genesis and how he went through times of challenge, difficulty and testing, but he emerged vindicated, triumphant and victorious. It is a fast burning candle of joy. Sasson's antonym is Avelut, which means mourning or sighing, which are both outward expressions of loss. There is Gila, the joy of revealing something new or unveiling some kind of fresh revelation. It is associated with making manifest Mashiach ben David, the birth of a child or the joy of reaping a harvest, a good outcome or plentiful yield. It is related to rolling or spinning around in joy. Therefore, a related word to gilah is gal, the word wave. Rina describes the joy of bringing something from its potential to the actual realization. Gilah and Rina are a pair that complete each other. While gilah is the joy of revelation, Rina is the joy of expressing this newness to others. It is often associated with song and prayer. The opposite of Rina is numbed silence. Kefda is the relief, 
joy and enlivening experience of unification. It is a quiet, deep and constant joy of inner connection and oneness. The opposite of kefda is detachment and depersonalization. The word ditza is a spontaneous ecstatic joy. It is related to the dancing and leaping at a wedding. It is best described as how a fish briefly jumps out of the water and flies through the air. In such moments, all unplanned, irrational thought, separations and habituations fall away. This word also describes the joy of the messianic era. The opposite of ditza is fear. Zohala is an intentionally cultivated joy. Zohala imitates the sound a horse makes when it neighs. It is a joy that projects the confidence to communicate something. Pitska is the joy of spontaneously cracking open. This joy, often accompanied by singing, marks the new beginning of something springing into being. Alitza is the joy of giving joy. This word can sometimes be used in the intimate union of a couple. This word alitza can mean bursting with happiness. Our last word, hara'a, is the awe-filled joy of being small in the presence of someone greater. Its biblical usage is usually associated with the coronation of the king. This joy is found in being of service to God and to our neighbour and also doing our part to build the kingdom. When we read the Holy Scriptures, there is the idea of rejoicing and celebrating the truth of God, being glad in the hope of His promises and being happy to be counted as His covenant people. Faith gives us the hope to face our future with joy. When we develop meaningful relationships with other individuals, it will bring great joy and purpose into our lives. We look forward towards the hope of the covenant as a joyous and grateful people as we envision the great redemption of humanity. The rabbinic sages debated about what to do when loss and grief and joy and gladness meet. The Talmud mentions a scenario where a funeral procession and a wedding procession meet in the centre of town. Rabbi Shlomo Yitzaki said, When the bride comes out from her father's home to the wedding hall at the same time as those accompanying a dead body for burial, and both groups are shouting, one group shouting with joy and the other shouting in mourning, and we don't want to mix the two we reroute those accompanying the deceased. So, when a funeral procession and a wedding party meet, which one has the right of way? The grief and the loss, or the joy and the gladness? The Talmud rules that in such a case, the wedding procession should proceed first. Even in the face of death, we must lead with life. The sages teach us that when the two meet, we reroute our grief and we don't postpone a celebration because joy and gladness should get the right of way. But why did the sages believe this? Tractate Semakot, also known as Evel Rabati, a minor tractate that deals with mourning, suggests that the honour of the living takes precedence over the deceased. We do not postpone joy because Jews are a people invested in hope. So the wedding takes precedence, because a funeral is a reflection on all that was, while a wedding is a reflection on all that is yet to be. It is a custom and a practice to not delay a wedding when bad things happen. Because so many bad things have happened in the history of Israel, it is an optimistic statement to continue with a wedding. A wedding is about the future. No matter how difficult today is, we are confident that the future will be better. Rabbi Nachman taught, Mitzvah Gadola Lehiot Besimka. 
It is a great and important mitzvah to be happy always. This is beneficial as a lifestyle even when it is difficult to be happy. When we go through terrible times, we must be prepared to have to force ourselves to be happy, especially when times are tough. This is one of the most beautiful acts of defiance in the face of those who seek to harm Israel, the chosen people of the book. Psalm chapter 43 verse 5 says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you murmuring within me? Hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, the salvation of my countenance. At the very moment that we perform the mitzvah of joy with obedience as we are commanded, we are one with God, in union with God. This togetherness transforms the relationship to create joy together with God that goes beyond mindless, even grudging obedience. Observance of God's commandments without an awareness of this other level of meaning can leave some adherents feeling like slaves, which is not what God wants from us. Instead, when we perform mitzvot with great kavanah or intention, we should feel that God is with us and that we have been given the opportunity to join in a great undertaking to walk down the path of history in step with our Creator. This understanding must necessarily lead to feelings of elation, gratitude and joy. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10 says, The ransomed of Adonai will return and come to Zion with singing, Berina, with everlasting joy upon their heads, Vesimkat Rosham. They will obtain gladness and joy, Sason Vesimka, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Every day, every hour, and every moment, let us strengthen ourselves and make a completely new joy-filled moment. We may have to start again several times on the same day itself. We can instantly achieve the happiness we seek by adjusting the focus of our thoughts and turning it towards God. Whatever has happened in the past, let us forget what lies behind. Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 to 14 Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal for the reward of the upward calling of God in Messiah Yeshua. Let us keep our thoughts directed to God. Let us take hold of new beginnings with joy. Regardless of what happens to us, let us endeavour with all our might to make God our strength. The fountain and source of His kindness is never exhausted. What do we do when everything is falling apart? We can give ourselves a break, evaluate what we can or cannot control, and accept what is happening, receiving it calmly. Most of all, let us work on the importance of being happy and let joy lead the way. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed our time together. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom. Shalom.